So if we create an int x and give it the value 6, we represent that like this. If we create an int y but don't give it a value, it'll get a default value of 0. Then if we say y equals x, y will get the value of x. So it gets a copy of what's in our x variable. It's important that we think about y equals x as gets, because y gets the value of x, because otherwise it's a little bit confusing, you know, like y equals x, is that the same as x equals y? It is not. So that distinction is super important. And if we change one of the values of these to be 8, the other one wouldn't change. So if I say x gets the value 8, now it's 8. If we make a new string hello, we can represent that like that. It's a little hard to read, but that says hello. And I chose to say new string and then give it its value. There I'm making it explicit that we're creating a new string. But actually Java knows that this is a super common need, and so it makes it easier and you don't actually have to say that new string part. So that's the right hand side. And we can think about Java statements as always getting the right hand side evaluated first. So on the left hand side, we're making a variable. That variable needs to hold a reference to a string, and the variable's name is str1. Then remember, equals means gets. So str1 gets a value that references that hello string. We represent those as one of these little remote controls, and it's got a ribbon that connects it to the object it's referencing. If I make another string variable, str2, but I don't give it a value, then the variable will just not reference anything. So we can think about that as like a variable that could hold a remote control, but it doesn't have one. In Java, we'll call this null and is often drawn as an X. So we saw here that when we didn't give Y a value, it started at zero. That was its default value. And here, we, when we didn't give string two a value, it started at null. That was its default. We can see another example when we create a reference that could reference an int array. So just like the string, since we didn't give ARR1 or array1 a value, we just put a semicolon and we didn't have a get statement, its default is null. Now this isn't permanent. We can add a line that sets ARR1 or array1 to be an array with three elements. So the right hand side makes an array with elements 0, 25, and 21. So the gets or equal sign creates a reference that points to that array. So now array1 is no longer null. We have a reference and it references this array. And we could change string2 as well. So right now it's null, but if we say that this gets the value of string1, we make a copy of what's in string one, and we get it here in string two. So string one is a reference that points to our hello object. So string two gets a copy of that that also points to our hello object. And just because str1 and str2 currently point to the same thing, they don't have to stay that way. We could use another get statement or an assignment statement and change them. So we could say now that str1 gets the value of team. So that's a new string with the contents team. And what would happen is now str1 would reference that team. And it's important to note that that didn't change what str2 is referencing. It still points to hello and str1 points to team. I'll mention here that strings are actually a little bit weird, so you actually can't change them. So there's no methods that we can call on a string that changes them. So even in the case where these both reference the same string, neither one of them could actually change it, so it didn't matter that they were referencing the same string. And when we're finished executing the main, this whole stack frame will go away. Here's the code. See if you can trace it just like we did in the video. 